Well, welcome everyone. Is there any public comment today on items not on the agenda? Oh, I thought that might be an indication that someone actually did have something to add. I saw some, heard some feedback there, but maybe not. See none, we'll roll right into our agenda. Our first item, Aaron Couts. Uh, we have a request to authorize the chair to sign a, sign a certificate of compliance for executive order number 12-2016. Aaron. Yeah, hi, good morning everyone. Um, so this is an executive order that is an attachment for the county and tribal matching grant application. And it dates back to when Governor Bullock was in office in 2016, he signed an executive order as part of his equal pay task force that um, encourages people receiving state funds to um, do three things to support equal pay. And that includes, um, not retaliating against employees who ask for wage information, posting a salary range when advertising a position and agreeing to ask about employees, agreeing not to ask about employees wage history in the hiring process. And um, as you can see from that form that was included as part of the application packet, um, you can either agree and you get an additional five points in the grant or you can disagree <laughs> and not receive any of those points. Um, and so I, I do think that those are probably um, initiatives that our service providers can um, support. Okay. Any questions? Questions? No, um, we need those five points. So I'm gonna motion to approve <laughs> the or sign the certificate of compliance for executive order number 12-2016. I think it's a great idea. Let's let's uh, I'll second that. Okay. okay, any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. County Auditor David Wall, we have a request to approve a resolution giving automatic bid reductions to businesses certified as DBEs by the Montana Department of Transportation. That's right, good morning everyone. Uh, hope you all are, are doing okay. Um, so yeah, this has kind of been a, a long time coming. I know I've uh, talked to you about this before and even brought it to an admin meeting before. So uh, this is uh, kind of the, uh, I don't wanna say the end of a long road because it's really just the beginning. But um, in essence, what this is uh, trying to do is take a, uh, a, a system that has kind of uh, unequal uh, outcomes for certain groups of people um, and trying to uh, create a loving, uh, level playing field uh, for those folks as far as uh, procurement and getting government contracts. Uh, so you can see I, uh, the first where is in this uh, resolution states that uh, businesses owned by uh, people of color, women or people with disabilities have uh, historically been disadvantaged in their ability to compete in the free market due to diminished capital and credit opportunities as compared to others in the same or similar lines of business who are not owned by people of color, women, or people with disabilities. That's the kind of crux of this. And uh, folks in those groups can uh, certify with the state of Montana Department of Transportation as what is called a, a dis disadvantaged business enterprise. Uh, the state has this system where they can uh, give preferential treatment to uh, DBEs that are certified with them for certain uh, procurement. And they did a, a study in 2016 uh, to determine if this would be uh, a viable way to, to help out and it was determined that it would be. And so we're kind of piggybacking on that study to help here uh, locally. So the, the resolution is really to give, it, it's kind of a, a, a two-parter here. Um, in those uh, situations where we uh, choose a vendor strictly on price, uh, we would reduce uh, their bid or quote by 5% if this company is registered as a DBE with the state of Montana. Um, for uh, many of our larger procurements, uh, we don't go only on price. We have a scoring method like via uh, an RFP, as, as you all are aware, in which case we would uh, then uh, increase the score by uh, also by 5%. 
Um, there is also an, uh, an additional uh, uh, statement here that we will undertake a study because I, I really feel, and I, I think using that DBE designation is a great first step, a really good idea because it's kind of narrowly focused and it can do a little bit of good. But I have no doubt that uh, the auditor's office uh, policies and procurement policies throw up barriers to certain groups of people. And um, I, I'd like to know what those barriers are and how we can remove them. And I think the only way to do that is to learn a lot more about our market here locally in Missoula, what kind of businesses there are and what kind of uh, barriers they face. And so uh, this is to undertake a study uh, to examine uh, county procurement policies and procedures to identify barriers based on race, ethnicity, gender identity or expression, ability status, sexual orientation, class or age. Uh, I've been working very closely with Jamar Galbraith, our equity coordinator on this, and uh, as well as Brian West from the attorney's office. Hey, so hopefully hey Dave, I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. Juanita, did you intend to share your screen? No, thanks, Dave. I don't know how this is happening. I had to. <laughs> if you hit that little X next to the microphone. There you go. Oh, oh too far. Go back to the left. Oh, too nope, far. Too far. The X. The X. Oh, get back. It's there, right there. there we go. So sorry. OK. <laughs> go ahead, Mr. Wall. Uh, that, that was basically it. Uh, th this is to give uh, uh, bid reduction uh, to DBEs and to uh, study uh, in what other ways we can make sure that our county procurement policies are uh, fair and free of barriers to uh, any you know groups of people. Dave, are there any uh, questions people may have for me? Yeah, Dave Strohmeyer, are you good with me asking Dave Wall some questions on this? I ask him the probing <laughs> questions that are on all of our minds right now. Go ahead. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if I'm going to be doing that. But Dave Wall, uh, what's the method of study, and for for uh, ex learning what those other barriers are, so we can figure out how to uh, begin to address them? I have to be honest. I'm not really sure. I, uh, we uh, Jamar and I uh, met yesterday with some folks at Missoula Economic Partnership uh, to to see what kind of data they may have, and okay. they they may. I think they'll be able to have uh, some good information for us, and also recommended a couple of organizations over at the university. I think one of them is uh, was it Blackstone and uh, PTAC maybe. Um, so some we, we have some contacts over at the university to talk to too who may have some uh, data on just the makeup of uh, local businesses. But as far as contacting businesses and, and really trying to see what kind of barriers there are, I think we need to bring somebody in uh, to and, and do yeah. an RFP for a yeah, small scale study. To, That's kind of uh, what I was getting some, at. I wasn't sure if there was something in the works. Yeah, well, there's, yes, yes, <laughs> very early on in the works, absolutely. Okay, great, great, thank you. Yeah. Sure thing. Any other questions? I was just going to ask Jamar or, or Brian, do you guys have any, any comments on this? Brian West, Jamar, Galbraith. I was waiting to see who was going to speak first. Go ahead, Jamar, and then I'll pipe in. Sure. Um, thank you, Brian. Excuse me one moment. Um, I am I'm excited uh, about this. Um, I think that this is a good opportunity um, to examine some of the systemic barriers um, that I think a lot of folks said that there's a lot of talk about um, and folks are looking for some really tangible um, and I don't want to use evidence because that's the because uh, that's I think that the, that's the wrong word. But uh, folks are looking for ways to adopt solutions towards uh, systemic barriers, and one of them is identifying them. And so uh, one of the things I appreciate about this method is that it gives the opportunity to say we understand that that barriers exist. We're not sure where they are, but here's the steps that we're taking. And I think that the steps that we're taking um, is important um, because it's not we're addressing the problem and then talking about the problem. It's we're 
where we're researching and identifying the problems so we develop solutions to them. Um, and uh, the other thing I appreciate too is um, I, I, you know, I think that um, it gives us the opportunity to uh, to look and expand at how marginalized communities interface um, with uh, with economics in, in Missoula. Um, and I think that that's uh, a really big way of getting uh, to a lot of our uh, addressing some of those systemic inequalities. So um, I, I appreciate this, and I will, you know, I think that it is a, it's a good first step. Um, but I think that it's also um, one that that's necessary. Thanks, Brian. Well, I won't beat the horse, so to speak, but I uh, will echo the sentiment from both Dave and Jamar that this is a first step. I know that um, uh, I know that this isn't exactly the, the full leap that Dave wanted to take in the first go around. But what I view us doing here is, is taking a first interim step and then making sure that we measure twice and cut once and ensure, ensure that what Missoula County takes up in the future is on sound footing and defensible and will be successful. Yeah, if I may just re respond to that too, I think one of the things is that this gives us an opportunity to a lot of the uh, like conversations and research tend to be uh, like deficit focused, what are we missing um, and that sort of thing. But this gives us an opportunity to examine um, the success factors and, and, and identify ways in which we can replicate those success factors. Um, and that's how we that's really how we how we grow this. So thank you. Well, even though we typically type try to just uh, cut multiple times and not measure at all. I think uh, I think it's probably prudent, Brian, that we are doing the measuring twice and cutting once. That's a, a good analogy. Absolutely. Other questions or a motion? I would um, move that uh, the board approve resolution giving automatic bid reduction to businesses certified as DBEs by the Depart Montana Department of Transportation. Second. Any further discussion? And I'll just say this is uh, uh, a good piece of work, uh, Dave. I really appreciate you uh, taking an expansive view of the auditor's office. It's unfortunate that we have no members of the media here today, uh, apparently, because this is a significant step. So uh, with no further discussion, uh, let's go ahead and vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 OK. Thanks, Dave yeah, Wall. Great, great Dave Wall and Jamar. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Next, we have a couple employment agreements. Chris. Good morning, commissioners. So our first item here is an employment agreement with Ann Hughes to serve as your chief operating officer uh, for the next three years. Uh, this does include an increase in salary that begins with a new fiscal year, so it'll be part of the 2022 budget. Uh, I think Ann's done an outstanding job during this uh, first year. As you know, it was a, a bit of a rough transition for all of us. So we, we lost our long-term CAO, Vicki Zire, who was an outstanding employee. Uh, and all, all during COVID. Uh, so I think Ann's done an outstanding job of helping to, to bridge that gap and really stepping in uh, to fill that role and take on some new challenges. So I would recommend that you sign the agreement with Ann for the next three years. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yes. I'm um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. No, I, oh, I'm very excited that we have the opportunity to sign this agreement. Like likewise, and what a year it's been. Uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, Anne. <laughs> um, I'm going to yep move uh, that the board approve the um, the elect or that we electronically sign the employment agreement with. Uh, sorry, no, I'm look, I'm looking at number four. Um, Same sign percent. The employment agreement with Anne Hughes to serve as our CEO for the next three years with the salary Good. of nine an hour. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, what do you think, Josh? I'll second that. Very good. Uh, any further discussion on the motion? See none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Ann. Thanks, Ann. Now, Thanks. Chris, you get to sing your own accol accolades uh, here. I, I am not going to sing my own accolades. Uh, commissioners, I just want to say, though, that it has been an honor to uh, serve as the CAO for the last uh, year. Uh, big shoes to fill, and I'm still working on filling them, but I, I really appreciate it. it sounds like um, you got some good responses. I asked uh, Karen Harrison to conduct a 360 evaluation because I don't think it's appropriate for me to comment on my own performance, but it sounds like you heard well from, from staff, uh, both the positive and the negative, and I will uh, strive to make the negative better and continue the positive. That's what I will, will say about my, uh, for just for myself, but it has been a real honor to get to do this work for the last year, and I look forward to several more years of getting to do that work, so. 
Great. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> well, it's an honor to have you, Chris. I couldn't, I can't imagine going through a day without talking to you. Absolutely. I, I, I work, I am lucky to work with, in my opinion, the best group of people that any, any organization has ever had. Oh. So I, wow. I feel much the same way. So great. Well, with that, I'm going to move that the board move the contract with Chris. Oh, but I'm sorry, uh, Anne, I thought she, she had her hand raised or she was. Uh, I, didn't. I unmuted myself, though, and I'll just I'll just add that Chris has just been incredible to work with and it has been a tough transition year for a lot of us. And um, I'm just really grateful to, to have him in the role that he's in. And I think many others share my sentiments. Thanks, Anne. What do you think, Juanita? Do you want to second Josh's motion? Sorry, I interrupted Josh. So yes, an enthusiastic second. We can't go through, yeah, an hour without uh, Chris. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes, thank you very much, Chris, for your service and continued service. Uh, well done. Uh, any further discussion? See none. All in favor? Aye. 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 I, I just want to say thank you again for the opportunity because I really do look at it as an opportunity and um, I feel really fortunate we have a we have a great group and I think we have fantastic leaders you know both in the commission and uh, and across the county and in, in our both our electeds and appointed department heads I feel really honored so thank you Very good Ditto. Thank you <laughs> okay our final action item today uh, Brian are you filling in for Matt Jennings I bet that I am. So, uh, <laughs> commissioners, before you's request to appoint a special deputy county attorney, uh, that's in the matter of State of Montana versus Brian Perini. As you know, from time to time, this office has a conflict, or alternatively, the attorney general's office has a special wing that handles certain special crimes and cases. And I apologize, I'm very rapidly trying to find out from Matt Jennings which of the two categories this falls into, but in any event, we need to have a special deputy county attorney against Mr. Perini. Okay, we'll trust that judgment. Yeah. Motion to approve the appointment of special deputy county attorney in the matter of state versus Brian uh, Preeti. I'll second that. Any further discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Brian. Okay. On Thanks, behalf Brian. of Mr. Jennings, thank you very much. You bet. <laughs> okay, we've got. A few correspondence items today. The first is a letter of support for the county and tribal matching grant application. Erin. Hi, I'm back. Um, so this is a letter of support from the commissioners for the county and tribal matching grant. Um, hopefully you all have a copy of it in front of you, but it's basically um, committing to, you know, the services that are going to be provided in it and also noting that we are going to be leveraging some match um, in particular the macarthur foundation grant our mental health mill levy um and probably some other in-kind funding um for the grant application um just as a heads up as i've been working on it we had a very tight turnaround and um as of right now, I'm still waiting on some final numbers from people, but using some numbers that we had in the past, our request is at $1.2 million, $1.2 million for the two years. Um, so it's a larger ask than we've had in the past. Part of that is um, the crisis stabilization facility and um, some support for the mobile crisis team. Um, but I say we go for it. Um, <laughs> We, I had a, a monthly meeting with the state, and that included Scott Malloy from the Montana Healthcare Foundation. And I don't think that we're alone in asking for this. It's, it is going to be a more competitive grant this year, but um, you know, I, I'm I'm hopeful that we'll get funded for the majority of it. So, and when do we hear back? They are hoping to let us know by May, which I would be surprised about, but they really want the contracts to start June 1st. So fingers crossed we'll hear. I mean, you know, they have a pretty detailed scoring method, and so I think it will probably really depend on, um, you know, how many people apply. But um, right now we have eight letters of support 
we're looking at getting 10. We have 23 pages of narrative. <laughs> we have, we, we've done a lot of work and I think we will have a, a, a application we can be proud of. Do you think that crisis stuff is uh, the most vulnerable piece of this because of its newness? No, and um, talking to Scott on Tuesday, he actually felt like Missoula was well positioned, at least to get the planning grant. We did put yep. in 100,000 yep. for renovations as well, but he he thinks that we're in a very good spot to get the the at least the planning grant money. Great. Thanks for all your work. This is yeah. such an important grant, uh, huge yeah. in terms and of I'll, people affected. I will be happy to send the final document to you once it's done. It's it's due next Thursday, so. Thanks, Aaron. Hi. So that letter will be coming around to us to electronically sign. Yep. Great. Thank you. Right. Reach Thanks. out with any other questions, please. Yeah. So our second item is, let's see. It's asking us to request that we approve and sign a budget amendment letter. I, we typically do not vote on uh, letters. So does anyone have any insight on this one? Yeah, that's that's me. This is Kayla Talbert with Grants and Community Programs. Um, apologize for the confusion on the, the language in the request. Um, what I am seeking for your um, signatures on is a budget amendment letter that we will address to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And this is for the uh, um, continuum care rapid rehousing grant that we have with the YWCA Missoula. Um, and what the request is, is to move $30,000 out of the rental assistance budget line item and move it into the supportive services line item. This will allow the Y to provide more intensive case management for their clients, um, which includes, you know, making sure that they get referred to the right community programs and do a lot more of a landlord partnership and landlord liaison so that they can build those relationships with the private and property management companies in town. Um, what we are seeing is that uh, because of COVID, the rental vacancy rate has been very, very low in Missoula, almost near zero. So when they try to place their clients into um, apartments, they're either just not available or very competitive. And so we they were having um, challenges in spending down the rental assistance budget line item. So by moving these funds to um, the supportive services, they are confident that they will be able to spend down the grant funds by the end of the grant term. Um, and I think one really good example that they provided that really encapsulates their challenges is that they've in the last one to four months, they have been working with 20 clients. And of those 20, they've all been applying for the same rental units, um, in addition to other people in the community that also apply for them. And only they've only been able to place two out of those 20 clients Ooh. into rental homes. So I think it's just been a very challenging time for the Y in this um, budget amendment, if it's approved by HUD, would really help them um, with their grant and their mission to help these families. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the explanation. Any other questions? Yes. So this will just be coming around to us to sign also. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Kayla. All right. Next, we have a letter to the Sealy Lake Sewer Board regarding the interlocal agreement that we have with them. Chris. Hi, Commissioners. Uh, so this is just a quick letter to the Sealy Lake Sewer Board uh, for their meeting, which is actually tonight, letting them know that we'll need to uh, renegotiate as they go through their process after uh, the vote that occurred uh, related in particular to the amounts that were coming from the revolving loan fund, uh, some of which was already paid out uh, in the form of a loan and that they will be reimbursing and some of which was pledged as grant match. Uh, for that. It does leave on the table in the letter and it, I believe it should in the interlocal as we go forward and, and negotiate that, uh, leave in the option for those funds again in the future should uh, something else be happening, uh, you know, something else happen with that project, be it ARPA funding or some other form of funding uh, or some other solution that will help to address this because obviously the issue 
uh, around the need for it is not going away, even though the vote uh, went the way that it did. So this letter will come from the commission, uh, kind of highlighting those areas and asking to uh, to, to update the interlocal agreement. We'll also attach the most current interlocal agreement just to make it uh, easy for folks to be able to reference what uh, what sections we're talking about. So. Great, thanks. 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 Yeah. All right, and while we don't have this on the uh, agenda as a discussion item, is there anything that we want to recap for the legislature? Nope. I guess I have I have two items right out of the shoot, uh, one of which uh, will be uh, late breaking news for uh, for everyone and the other uh, some of you are in the know about. So I spoke earlier today with Senator Tester's legislative director, Justin Folsom. And he is going to see what he can do uh, as U.S. Department of Treasury is is drafting guidance for uh, uh, ARPA funds, uh, American Rescue Plan Act uh, dollars, uh, to see if they can, um, if the senator can put some pressure on Treasury to get language in there that would preclude the state of Montana or any state government from uh, requiring uh, a match. Uh, for us to receive local government to receive the state allocations of ARPA funds. So more to be discovered on that front. That would be a huge help. And speaking of Sealy Lake Sewer, that could uh, uh, put that back in play because otherwise this there's no way we can anyone can come up with a match uh, of the order of magnitude to get that project implemented. The other thing, uh, HB 464, uh, I spoke with Diane Sands a little while ago, and she is going to, uh, in fact, as soon as she got off the phone with me, was going to put in a amendment request to that bill that would uh, delay the the uh, effective date. Uh, she saw no no chance in hell of uh, of anything more radical happening. It's it's going to happen. We're going to get screwed at the end of the day. The best that we could probably hope for is to delay this by a year or two. Um, so we'll see where that goes. Dave, did she feel like there was a, and that amendment had any chance? The only way that it would have legs would, would it, there's no way that we could crack, um, frame it in terms of this will give us time to work with the petroleum industry to figure out a different collection, uh, strategy. That's, she thought that's dead on arrival. The okay. only way we could frame it is in terms of we are currently, um, Collecting and utilizing this, these funds, a delay in, in effective date would give us uh, a way to strategize how we're going to fill the the pothole, so to speak, uh, that's left by the. Uh, would she, would she want to know about? Uh, would she want to know about projects that ha that are underway that would have to be stopped, or that we need to we need to complete beforehand? If this is about the money, maybe there's projects that we we can't we can't not finish them. Well, I guess I would say, so what are you thinking of specifically? The Sealy project, like the. Well, this wouldn't, this no, is gas no, I'm tax. Talking about the, the, I'm, I'm not talking about the um, sewer project. I'm talking about no. like day shot. Like we've got oh. part of the road paved. It's not, we're not going to fi fix the rest of it. Yeah, the, or the, the project, the chip sealing project, the $300,000 chip sealing project Perfect. up in Sealy. That's what Perfect. I was thinking of. Perfect. That's, that's right. Yeah, but these they're just I mean, these are road projects that we that are that are begun that we can't not finish and now don't have the money otherwise without this. So how about this? How about we punt this to, to Shane to come up with a list of, of precisely what the impacts would be of a, a dead stop um, yeah. as opposed to a, a, a two year, say, delayed effective date? Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. And we just make sure that Shane and uh, Diane, talk in the very near term. I'm yeah. talking like within the next few hours. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Like actually uh, by noon. Perfect. Uh, Chris, could you uh, could you Make reach out to happen. Shane and? Yeah, we we have uh, Allison, Ann, and I on here, and one of us will get in touch with Shane and and ask him to get in touch with Diane or just shoot an email off to Diane because I think. Uh, it sounds like they'll take executive action today. I don't know if she'll have the amendment for that or if it will be when it goes to the floor, but either way, these would be good things, good points for her to raise, uh, both in committee and potentially on the floor. So, 
And the reason is that not. And the refrain on this, if we could get it in there, these are all projects in rural areas, 100% yep. of them. Not okay. bike bridges the or rural folks who are going to be affected. Yeah. So either Ann or Allison and I will get a quick note off to, to Shane to, to ask him to put those together real quick. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah. can't. I still cannot tr stomach that this is going to go away. I just can't. I'm like holding on to hope against hope. It was so much effort and coalition building, a year's worth, and then voters voted for it to have these guys just take this away because they like petroleum and don't like Missoula. It's really, really hard to stomach. Well, and, and the final backstop here, if, if this does go through and is, is uh, passed by both houses, is the governor. And uh, that's, that's a card that we can still play, and then I will... Uh, I'll reach out directly to him on Please that. Please do. Hopefully he won't be as lost in the symbolism and maybe the, uh, the, as the legislators are. Yeah, this is a very tough, tough one. There's no doubt. Uh, I don't have yet. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> But SB 260 died. We still get to do right sorry. as I say. But the good the good news today was that the takings bill died, which which is actually very good news considering you know how difficult it would have made any ability for the county to you know consider land use at all. Yeah, um, and and BIPA 2.0 and BIPA 2.0 also died before 06, which would have made it much more difficult for citizens to have their ballot returned. So. Hey, going back just briefly to HB 464, if this thing actually does get uh, passed and signed into law, uh, I love the idea of, of, of uh, our sign shop creating some signage that we could sprinkle around the county that would say, this poorly maintained road is brought to you. Uh, uh, I think. <laughs> I think. And if we do end up having to, making the choice to raise taxes to add mills, uh, I would love to call them on people's tax bill, the gas tax replacement mills. So yeah. when people look, they see why this is here. Yeah, we do have some ability to control what's on the tax bill, so we can definitely look at. That'd be great. Yeah, <laughs> that's how we do that. So I what don't else? have any other specific bills uh, today other than that. So and when the good news is it, it sounds like they're winding down. Isn't it going to end soon? Uh, they, they, it sounds like they are working their way towards winding down late next week or early the following. Is what hey, we're Chris, do you think they're going to end up coming back in, in the summer to figure out how to deal with all that federal money they've got? So the way they've written 632, they would not need to. These commissions actually have a fair amount of authority. Not that they couldn't, but they, they've actually given them quite broad latitude uh, to be able to these commissions that will be created for each pot of funding that the state has. So I, I don't know that they will feel the need to, but mm. we'll have to wait and see. Never say never is what we know about this legislature. Yeah. <clears throat> Anything else? No, well, not for me. Another yeah, admin, way to go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, 1034. It's a uh, it's uh, a little longer than some of them uh, recently, but uh, my apologies for that. But <laughs> thanks everyone. Okay. Thank Have a good you. day. Goodbye. Thank you.